Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going for a double spread on my art journal and the inspiration came from this lovely collection by Stamperia. For my project I will be using pattern paper as well as a stamp, but you will find rice paper, die cuts, chipboards, stencils, different sizes of pattern paper, so you can choose whatever works for you. I will quickly browse through the 6x6 paper patch so you can have a look at the design, the colors. I absolutely love this patchwork look and feel. The colors are amazing and there are so many focal points to create a card or an art journal out of them. So for example the cards, the ornaments, the tree, the angel and even the houses are perfect for different focal points. And of course you get the last page where you get loads of images that you can die cut. I went through the 6x6 just because it fits nicely on my frame, however look at the 12x12 papers, you can even find images to cut out for an advent calendar. These are great as they are for focal points on top of a card. I am going to play with this pattern paper for today which is absolutely amazing, I love those houses. But I do have other pattern papers like this one with the angel for example, the one with the ornaments as well as uh, the other one with the cut that I can easily turn into an art journal, so pick your favorite between the ornaments, the angel and the cat. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. And let me know down below in the comments if you want me to use any of them for a new art journal project using the same pattern paper collection. So the inspiration for today's project came from this colorful town. I'm going to use my scissors to cut it out and you will see that this is quite big. I'm going to cut it out so you can see how it looks on top of my page. So since I started with a 12 by 12 pattern paper, this is quite big and it's going to cover up a big area of my page. I don't want to have that much of a focal point. That's why I'm going to adjust the line of the town and I'm going to cut it out to be slightly smaller. If you start with the 8 by 8 pattern paper, it wouldn't be as big. But again, it depends on the size of the art journal that you are working on. So if you are working on a 5x7, for example, you can just go with the 6x6 paper pad. So after cutting out the tall houses at the back, I like how it looks and don't throw away those houses. They are perfect to create a little scene on a card. So let's use a fun technique for the background and today I'm going with the Transfer Me Pages by Dress My Craft. There is a huge collection of them and they are perfect for uh, breaking out that blank page. You just stick that on top of your background and you have something ready to go. Here are a couple of more examples. I am going to leave down below links where you can find them. Keep in mind that they are really inexpensive, plus they are on sale now. So anyway, I'm going to use this uh, page for my background just to have something there. But since it isn't wide enough, I'm going to cut it in half and stick the halves towards the edges. This is where I realized that there is some white border. I didn't want that, so I'm just going to cut it off with my scissors before I peel off the plastic cover. I'm going to do that for the other page as well in order to transfer these lovely images on top of your pages you need to work with water i'm going to show you how i do it this is not the recommended way but all i do is just peel off the plastic cover stick them temporarily down they are quite sticky so they are going to stay in place and then i'm going to grab my spray mister and i'm just going to add lots and lots of water until i see the image coming through that white paper Instead of spraying, you can use a um, sponge with water. I just find it easier this way. And you can see when the paper is soaked, the image comes through. I can see what's underneath. Hopefully you can see them too through the camera. The more water you have and the more soaked it is, it's going to be easier for you to slide the top cover and reveal the image. At this stage I don't care too much about the perfect impression. After all, this is just the first layer. I will add lots of uh, color on top of it. So I peeled off the top without being too careful, but uh, you can see the image is nicely down. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side, again not being very careful since this is just one of my layers. 
It's a fun technique. You can choose many, many different designs for your backgrounds, but there are also designs that you can use as your focal points. I did share a video, I believe it was last year, that uh, I used those transfer me um, pages to create a little mini art journal. I will link that uh, below if you want to check that out. I'm using my heat gun just quickly to make sure that I don't have any wet areas and I do have an extra two little pieces, leftovers for another project. Now I'm going for a really fun technique and uh, this is microglaze. Instead of microglaze, if you don't have that, you can go with wax if you have that or even with Vaseline. Any of these would work for this technique. With my finger, I apply a generous amount of this product in different areas, making sure that I mainly go over the letters. And um, then I will apply acrylic paint. The medium here is going to resist the acrylic paint and I will be able to reveal what's underneath. So let's create some hot mess with our brush and our acrylics. Just cover up completely with any color that you like the background. I'm going for a night sky here. So I started my first layer with azure and this is art by Marlene acrylic paint. Nothing fancy here. I just made sure that I covered up completely as a first layer my background. Then I'm going to make sure that this first layer is dry. And then you already see that uh, the microglaze resists the paint on top. So once uh, the paint is completely dry, I'm going with a clean cloth and I will rub over that paint. And what that does is to pick up any color that didn't stick on the page due to that microglaze. It's a great technique because it allows you to reveal what's underneath. Layers upon layers, you can do that with different colors and the end result is going to be amazing. So here I'm repeating the same technique. This time, again, I'm applying my microglaze over the white areas as well as some of the blue ones. And I will go over it with black this time. I also switched from my brush to my brayer just to give it a completely different texture. And uh, I just have uh, mixing the black with that blue that I used previously. For that fold where you cannot go with your brayer, just use your finger, it is the perfect brush. Again, I'm making sure that this layer is completely dry and I will go with my paper towel and just pick up any of that uh, paint that stays on top without sticking down due to that microglaze. So here is what we have up to now. I'm going to stop with this technique now and just wrap up my background by adding a little bit of purple and black and I will go over it. This time I haven't used any of that microglaze. I am inking up the edges with black archival ink and although it looks like a hot mess, I always say don't pay too much attention on your background. Once you stick the focal points, the splashes and all the details on top of it, everything is going to come together as long as the focal points are going to stand out against that uh, background color. I am also adding some uh, golden splashes. I am using my Altenew metallic watercolors and these are going to work as stars far in the background. So once my background is drying, I'm playing with the pattern papers, trying to find different uh, pieces that I can uh, work with for my project. I am cutting out this border so that I can place it at the top to kind of frame my project. And from the stamp set, I'm going to use the stars as well as the moon. I will stamp them on different areas of pattern paper so that they look like they are made out of patchwork, just like the rest of the um, images. Just like my houses, to match the look and feel of it. I ended up with three stars and one moon. And once I have all the elements that I need, I'm going with a black marker all around the edges. This is a little detail that I like to do on my cutouts to make sure that they look as if they were perfectly cut. I am also going to use my paper trimmer to cut that uh, block of houses so that I can stick uh, each one on a different page. I don't like to have an image on the fold. 
And that's just my preference because I found out after years and years of art journaling that when I stick an image on the fold, it usually lifts right there after opening and closing the book many times. I also used white glue to stick everything down. Of course, you can go and stick it with any glue that you like. And just like always, I'm going to use my scissors to make sure that I cut out any paper that sticks out. And I went ahead and placed the stars and the moon on uh, the page, deciding where I want them to be. And I'm just making a dot, just so I know exactly where I need to draw those lines. I'm using my tea ruler and my white gel pen to draw some lines. I want to have a whimsical look and feel on this project. And I want those stars and the moon to look as if they are hanging from the sky. If you find that you are having trouble with your gel pen, a nice tip is to just try and use it on top of your finger. It's going to warm it up and it's going to work just fine. So now I'm going to stick everything down. If you are enjoying my mixed media projects, don't forget to hit the like button and also make sure to hit the notification bell. This way you will get notified whenever I post a new video. And I continue with my collage. Here I have those two borders that I cut out and I'm going to stick them at the top. And just like always, I will use my scissors to cut off any excess paper. Now here I didn't like how the ground ended exactly where the end of that house was. So I had to extend it a little bit. Little details like that can drive me crazy. Don't ask me why. For my quote, I'm going with Let It Snow, again from the same pattern paper with the houses. And you see that although that uh, collection is uh, mainly Christmas, I made a page out of it, which is winter themed. And just like I did with all the other cutouts, I'm going to stick it down. And at this stage, you can call your page done, or like me, you can continue playing. And what I did was to cover up completely the whole page with matte medium. I forgot to film that, but um, I'm making sure at this stage that everything is completely dry so that I can move on and play with my big brush markers to add shading and even more color on my page. And my camera didn't cooperate here so well, it is kind of out of focus, but you can still see what I'm doing. I'm just using a darker shade of the color that's underneath with my brush markers and I go over it. This is going to help those uh, houses pop even more. And you don't have to match the marker with the color of the background perfectly, just a shade darker will do the trick. And that's what's great with this technique. You don't need uh, every color under the rainbow of these uh, markers. Just a few of them will do the trick. If you like this look, but you don't have uh, big brush markers, then uh, one way to go would be to add those shadings with your watercolors and a fine brush. Of course, in that case, you don't need to cover up all the area with matte medium. You need your paper to be porous for that watercolor to work. So here all I'm doing is using a grey marker and I'm just adding shadows behind the buildings. This will help them pop even more and you can better see what's in front and what's at the back. With a brown marker I also added some shading on my quote and I did do the same technique on the moon, the stars, etc. And now it's time for some doodling. I did grab my fine tip black marker and I'm adding some sketchy lines around the buildings, the stars and the moon. And then with my white gel pen I'm going to add my highlights. These white lines always make a great difference in my projects. I absolutely love this technique and I cannot stay away from it. Very rarely you will find an art journal from me where I haven't used my white gel pen. Now here's another detail, I didn't like how those cut out elements look, so I'm just going to cover up the bottom with another piece of uh, paper. I'm also going to use my gel pen and go over those lines just to enhance them a little bit, to make them look brighter, and I will also draw a bow. 
And of course, you cannot have a winter-themed art journal, especially with the code Let It Snow, without some snow. That's why I'm going to add some white splashes all over the place. I don't care if it goes over my quote or over the houses. And I'm going to call this page done. So that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to like and comment. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.